And we are live. Welcome to The Bald Truth, where you can ask us anything and we'll answer. And if you don't ask us questions, we'll inevitably talk about Star Trek Voyager again and upset people who watch this, whether they be current or later in the show. But before we get started, look at this row I'm remembering. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Hey. And David Jones, I would love to know how you can get away with publishing okay. a book with zero dollars. We're also For anybody who might just be listening to this and not actually watching it, we put up a question that says, how much does it cost you to publish a book? And Mr. Jones said zero dollars. And I'm very curious as well as well, to how he manages that. I guess to publish, it's true. You just have to upload it for free. But we're talking editing costs and cover. And That's not what we're at. So, and I'm eating popcorn in front of you. I'm sorry that you can see me chewing. Oh, and El Montague is here. Be on the background. And it's for okay. people like El who we have to to. Ah, now we know. Publisher, okay. So he's a big time, traditionally published author, and he will be well, on our show. Those soon. guys. He will be on our show soon too. Probably, All right. Cool. Hopefully in two weeks, Dave. I will be contacting you after the show is over. If I don't contact me, because that means that my you know squirrel brain went on to something else shiny. Ooh, yeah, right, shiny. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> with with that question answered very simply with zero dollars, I guess we'll wait for somebody else to come on and, and give us their answer to it. Um, but we have some stuff going on right now. Mike, what do you got coming up? So I, I'm going to be very, very busy. Um, I have the next book that I'm going to publish, which is the first book in a sci-fi series that I don't know how many books it's going to be. At least two books and at least two novellas. And I'll leave room for more, depending on if people actually read it. Um, and April, I am out all four weekends. I am traveling. I'm going on vacation to see the eclipse the first weekend, and then I have Comic Cons the next three. You got your funky little glasses for eclipse watching? Oh, of course. Do you get the cool I, ones or do you just get the little shitty paper ones? Oh, no, I got plastic ones. Let's see. You got them with you? Uh, in the other room. Oh, all right. Well, go get them. No. Um, why, why did you, you. You've been writing fantasy, and you yes. do it pretty well with fantasy. People seem to, to dig on Grammy and everything. Why shift to science fiction? So when I started writing in 2017, I wrote The Haley Traveler, which is sci-fi, and I rewrote it seven more times. <clears throat> and then I said, you know what? I need a break from this madness. I'm just going to write a fantasy story. Just I don't even know if I can write fantasy, but I'm just going to write it just to clear my head, and I'll come right back to the sci-fi story. And four fantasy books later... I am now coming back to the sci-fi story that I last touched in 2019. So sci-fi is actually where you wanted to end up, but it, it's not the diversion. The fantasy was the diversion. Um, it's, yeah, I suppose. Um, I have, I was going to say no, but I have four other series I want to write, and three <laughs> of them are sci-fi. One is fantasy, so... Uh, you know, I guess I'm leaning that way. Writer problems. So, yeah, I, I just, again, once I retire in that Nirvana land where there's suddenly 32 hours in a day, I will be able to do all the things I want to do. Right. Yeah, won't well, we all? All right. EL says, regarding our question, how much does it cost to publish a book? He says, it depends on what you do. You can technically publish for free if you do everything yourself. However, and then we have the little ellipse and no uh, no end to that. John Stevenson, friend of the show, my publishing theory involves me getting conned by an online book formatter for $700. Ouch. Dude, Ouch. that fucking hurts. Okay, so I guess there's a lesson in there. Yeah. Um, EL's back. Editor, 400. Cover art, 200. Formatting, 250 to 400. Yeah, adds up quick. So, I mean, you're, you're looking at nearly a, nearly a grand. Yeah, uh, um, that's what I figured for me. It takes about a grand to publish, but uh, and then we can't miss our favorite Canadian. Uh, hopefully, Anitha's not on. Uh, <laughs> we can say that when there's only one of you out there. You know, it's like the U.S. and their special relationship with every country that ever comes to visit in Washington. They have a special relationship. 
Yeah, that's, right. our, that's with us and Canadians. They're all our favorites. I, 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 said, I put something on Twitter today, and it's the funniest thing, And because you said special relationship. So we have five cats, right? And this is a total aside. It means nothing. And there's one of them that's it, it should have never made it to six years old, right? Because it has anyway, it's still it's living beyond where it should live. And when my wife wants it, she whistles God save the king. And <laughs> that comes trotting from wherever he is. He, he and it's the funniest thing. She has anglicized the cat. It's it's kind of hilarious. So yes. All right, sorry. Go John ahead. was distraught that Grammy was not in the last interview that I did, but I had to have all the space, wall space for Dimitri's art. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Tim, yeah, those price, uh, you know, I'm hoping to make back what I paid for desperate dispatches in like one to two years. So I really don't want to pay a lot. And of course you are the most special Tim. <laughs> Unless Anitha gets on. Or I did say this when we were interviewing Usman, who is also Canadian, and I'm like, yes, Tim, you're my favorite Canadian, because that's what I'm here for. The, I mean, the real answer, I think, to the question is you can spend as much as you want to spend right? yeah. or, or as little as you want to spend. And sometimes spending the little will be readily apparent um, in how your book looks and how it reads and everything else. Yeah. But there's... Prop, you know, there are ways to do things that still look okay. I, I don't understand the formatting thing, why people have to spend money on formatting. Um, it, it just seems that's fairly simple thing to do, and it, even in Word. So I'm not really sure why. I guess maybe I can do it better if, if it's something that people are spending money on. Maybe I'm just not getting it, you know. So, so you format your own books? Yeah. Huh. We're going to talk. Okay. I mean, they're just, I'll show you a front chapter one. Right? It's just, right? yeah. you just make the, the gutter margins bigger than the, the outside margins on every page. It's, again, you it doesn't need to be fancy. It just needs to be, it needs to be clean. Right? Yeah. And Tim loves book formatting, oddly. I mean, it's it's okay, Tim. It's it's a fine thing to do, but loving it might be a, a bit of a stretch. A little worried for you, but, you know, you, you need to get out more. Right, but if people are charging 200 bucks for it, that's a great thing to do for yourself, right? Uh, I mean, I'm a guy who does it on Fiverr. He charges 50 bucks per yeah. one for hardback, one for paperback, so 100 bucks for me. But Even that, I mean, once I figured out the formatting, my books, right? Because all my books are the same size, so the margins are going to be the same for every book. Yeah. I just, when I get ready to write a new book, I take my last book, I delete all the words, and I just start typing in there, and it just formats it as I'm typing. It couldn't be easier, really. So, what, a thousand bucks? Yeah, David, you're, you're probably... Once you get the art and the editing, that's that's generally going to put you there pretty quickly because I, you know a, a decent cover I think is probably going to run you several hundred bucks, right? Unless you have a Belarusian artist friend. Not everybody has that. Really? <laughs> Believe it or not. And actually, as he corrected me, he's actually Uzbeki, not Belarusian. So, you know, that tells you how close we are. All right. So when's your uh, when's your sci-fi book coming out, man? Uh, my sci-fi book. I am hell bent on doing it the quote unquote right way this time. No, so I, don't give in. So I plan on being finished with the book in May, and I'm going to come out, launch it in July, and that way I'll have hopefully two months to send it out to arc readers and have reviews when it launches. Instead of hey everyone, it launched. Go go look at it now. Go read it and review it. Please, it's been a secret project because Mike didn't bother to tell anyone. Uh, yeah, I, so. I, I've done that with my previous eight books. I, they'll never expect it if I do it again. It's the perfect. Uh, it's the perfect strategy. Yes, and because that's worked out. So well. They'll never expect me to do it at night. Uh, so yeah, so and I was telling you just before we came on that I was talking to. 
friend of the channel, JCM Byrne, and I was asking him when his next book is coming out, and he laughed and said, I can't afford to put out another book this year, which I, I understand. I put one out in January, and I'm doing another one in, well, I'll be done in May, put it out in July, but then I want to enter it into the space bow competition that starts in August, so I have to publish by July. So that's why if I get it done by May, I get two months for ARC readers to read it. Nice. If I get done in June, they get one month to read it. Now, to get, let's let's say, 10 reviews from ARC readers, how many of those things do you think you have to give away? No idea. Um, take, take, take a guess. Take a while. Since I, there's a fair number of booktubers that I know, uh, I think... I would like to give away, well, I mean, I would give away 100 if I could, but I would like to be able to give away at least 20 copies for ARC readers, and of that I was hoping maybe five. I think David might be about right. Right. I think if you want 20 reviews, 200 is probably going to be closer to the mark. I mean, you know, 10%. Yeah. Or I could just open a number of Amazon accounts. <laughs> We do not condone that activity. No, if I did that, I'd just end up buying stuff on all of them, and I'd go poor faster. Yeah. Well, unless you unless you set yourself up with a um, one of those accounts that um, there's a word for it. I don't know. Just forget it. Okay, I'm forgotten. Somebody will figure it out and let me know. Anyway, never mind. Oh. So do you get, uh, get wait, when you publish through KDP, do you get one of those reader copies, you know, with a little bar across it first? No, because I publish through Ingram Spark. I'll see how you are. You don't, do you like buy a copy first? No. Then, before it's live? No. You just super roll the dice on this whole thing. Uh, so Ingram Sparks, usually 16 to 18 books can fit in a box. So I order whatever that max is and I order one box. Uh-huh. And... Only once did I, in. don't get me started on Fiverr. <laughs> no, I won't. Uh, but the one guy who did my cover formatting it and all, I had him redo at that time the first three books. And he did the first book and he did the second book, but he forgot to change the title. So I have my To Speak With Elders book, but it says Becoming a Druid on the spine and on the cover. But it has the wrong art. So. Next slide. Yeah, yeah. I, I think if you're if you're publishing with KDP or with Amazon, yeah. you can get a um, a not for resale kind of copy. I've done it before. It does add a little bit of time, right? Because you got to figure it's going to take them a couple weeks, few weeks to get it to you. Then you have to read it again, look through it, make any changes you want, and then order you know the ones that are going to be. But it does give you an idea of what. It's going to look like because the Amazon printers can vary wildly between the one in Baltimore and the one in Tennessee and and wherever it is. Okay. Uh, so Excuse me, I have to I have to mute El Montague now that he's available. Okay. He's here, so yeah. It's uh it, it's good to get a copy like that just so you can because we all know that the best way to find a spelling mistake is to print the book. So yes. I actually, Nico told me he's reading Desperate Dispatch. He goes, oh, by the way, you have Jailbreak Part 2, and the next chapter is Jailbreak Part 2. I'm like, thank you for pointing out that typo to me, in a chapter title, no less. Oh, you got the same chapter title on two chapters? Well, yeah, it's supposed to be Part 1 and Part 2, but no, I have two Part 2s. Nice. So, yeah. And that's the kind of thing that you'll just miss going over, it's, and, and that's why... A second set or even a third set of eyes looking at your stuff is a really useful useful thing and i don't just say that because i'm a second set of eyes for hire ding, ding. um but it is a very useful thing absolutely yeah I, I just count on the readers to be my second set of eyes because that works out well. <laughs> that's right because they're nice like that they won't, yeah. <laughs> won't hold it against you at all Ugh. absolutely not so after this uh, work of science fiction comes out, which which uh, what what are you going to continue on? Uh, so, um, what? Oh shoot! Now what's his name? I just went blank. I'm seeing his face. James Maxey. Uh, we interviewed him when we did the yeah. old format. Yeah. Uh, and he is, a, people, yeah. he is a very big proponent. He does a lot of comic cons, and 
the uh, and he's a very big proponent of you should have more than one series, you should have more than one entry point because, like for me, if you don't like druids, I got nothing else to sell you. Right. Yeah. So that's why I did sci-fi next. Plus, it'd be a quick book to get out. Then uh, I would love to take the temperature of my, people who've read the first series and see how mad they're going to be at me. But I want to actually write a third series, start that, which will be a fantasy series set in Spain. And then after I get those, the sci-fi and the Spain series, I'll go back to Britanni and do book five. But that's putting it off till probably mid-year next year. <laughs> So yeah, the multiple but, entry points is a is a really I don't think people mention that enough or um, really how important that is, especially if you go to a lot of cons like you do of having something that people could kind of dip into or buy book one of like several different series. Uh, James Maxted's another guy that we know, yeah. and he's got like 21 books or some nonsense out now. Crazy. Yeah. And he's got probably five different series, five or six different series. Yeah, because he has the box set, which is book one of all five of his series, which I thought was... Oh, that's clever. That was clever, yeah. Uh, just looking at, at EL here. It says, at Tim McKay, the formatting would have cost me 450 so I took a Skillshare course and took my time. It took me about two weeks to get the formatting the way I want it. Yeah, that's uh, much better than spending four and a half bills on that. Yeah. Doing your own audio book is, that's a bit of work. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of time. That's almost one of those things I would almost rather pay somebody for. But, you know, if I'm living in a van down by the river, I'll do it myself. Yeah. <laughs> so, John, I will tell you, I get my formatting done by a guy on Fiverr. I use the same guy, and he changes <laughs> what he does on a whim. Um, so, yeah, you get what you pay for. You know, I, I don't want to totally bag on Fiverr, though, because I have been working since my first book came out in 2018 with this uh, Ukrainian artist on Fiverr uh, who does my book covers. She actually, she's like one of these Photoshop manipulator people. Mm -hmm. um, and she did the first six, she did my first series, but I still use her today when I get my art from Matt Slay and she takes his art and puts it into the format for the book right so yeah. her and i had a conversation about what i wanted the covers to look like and so basically the art matt gives me is this and then she puts it into this whole thing and you know makes it all look like it's supposed to look and i mean that cost me less than 100 bucks to have that done and she'll do my ebook my paperback my hardback and uh i, I have her do a an ACX version in case one day I ever decide to put it on audio. Yeah. So, and David, I actually just bought Atticus because like I said, the guy who formats my book, he changes on a whim, the fonts and different things. And I'm always forever going back and fixing it. And then, so I bought Atticus when I will someday take the time to learn how to use it. Um, Tim, quick online course. Sounds like a lot of fun. I just wish I had the time to do it. And I I would, except for I have to schedule my procrastination, which is easily twice as much time as I spend writing. So Yeah, isn't it just? Thankfully, I made it out of my Civ 6 stage. That was two, two months down the toilet. Um, hey, speaking of Atticus, have you, have you bought, and this is for anybody, have you bought uh, programs and things to help you ostensibly in your writing uh, that you you tried and then just don't use? Oh, many, many programs. Yeah. I have what? to find my folder of things Mike Bolt that he never used for his writing. Um, Scrivener yeah. being one of them. I, I did Scrivener as well. I really wanted to use it. I desperately wanted to get organized, but I'm just not organized. And uh, I tried Scrivener, and I, I think it lasted about two or three chapters. And it's just like, you know, I'll, I'll do the scrolling thing in Word. It's just, I guess if I had a training course, maybe Scrivener would be okay, right? I can see why people would like it, but just, yeah, it didn't. Just like David says here, just didn't get into it. And Nico, Nico, did you hear your name oh, being called across the ether? I was talking about you. 
and how you so kindly pointed out that I had a typo in one of my chapter titles, which just again goes to show the best way to find typos is to publish your book. David, when you're on the show, we're going to talk about plotter. Remind us because we'll forget because we don't write anything down or prepare in any way, shape or form unless someone brings up Voyager tonight and then I'm ready. Um, <laughs> but I tried plotter for um, it, it had like a, a week free or something and I tried it and I thought it was pretty cool. I'm interested to hear how you're how you're liking it, having bought the whole thing. Well, he should be on next week so we can talk. Uh, what day am I going to be traveling? Uh, I don't know. When oh, are no, you next week I'll be okay. I'm not traveling. Okay. And awesome. Usman is here, so we have to say hi. Unfortunately, oh, no, we have two Canadians. What are you going to do, Mike? Who's your favorite now, huh? Shut up. Shut up. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Usman will not be the name of my bad guy in the space book. Oh, so it's still Tim? <laughs> uh, Tim's still your favorite by virtue of the fact you can't use Usman's name. So uh, yeah. let's see. Nico laughing at me. That's that's good. Um, Nico, have you read the final uh, novella in Desperate Dispatches? I saw your video today, but I was at work and I couldn't comment. Because as you may have guessed, that's where you show up in the fourth and final novella. Uh, you all die at the end, man. That's what Mike does in his novellas. He just kills everybody at the end. And Nico, I figured you'd be fine with that character. Andrew is the one I'm like, oh, I hope he's okay with that my portrayal of him um, because, you know, this is what I do. Booktubers, let me try to make them angry. I'm, I'm looking for something. So carry on. Uh, Darth Tim is the recommendation for my villain, but I don't know if we can have a Canadian named Darth Tim. I mean, that just sounds like a happy villain uh, <laughs> or at least a polite one. I find your lack of faith disturbing, eh? Ugh. Oh, I'm looking for something. I can't find it. Bugger. Bugger, bugger, bugger. Never mind. Priorities for spending. Editors are everything else. That is not a bad list. No, not at all. That is yeah. actually kind of perfect, actually. Yeah. Nico, I just conversations I've seen between you and Andrew, I was like, okay, I'm going to go with this is how you really are all the time. So, and I, oh, good. I'm glad Andrew's. <laughs> I figured he'd be fine. Okay. Yeah, I don't understand what that means, but so I put Joe before. I put Andrew and Nico in my book. Um, Nico's is a stonemason, and Andros is a sculptor. And they're always going back and forth and arguing at one another. Oh, that's right. Those two. Is that, is that who? Okay. I yeah. remember those guys. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. That was specifically there just to see if they're actually reading my books or just, okay, I got to rate this because I said I'd read it. So, you know what that, that scene reminded me of was um, I, I kind of picture this is going to go right to the head. I pictured him as Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, right? <laughs> in, in, um, in, in some movie that they were just like this little part in something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, nice. Dead Poet Society, maybe? Uh, no, I know. No, no, no. no. That, was, no that, it's, was, um, that was way, way ago. But no, no, no. I know what it is. I know the movie you're talking about, but yeah, it's it's gone. Um, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's it. My God, I just blanked on it now, too. Oh. Jesus. How sad are we? It's amazing we get anything written at all, ever. Uh, so well, how, how am I, <clears throat> just to go back to this, because why not? Goodwill hunting, yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, you are leaving a series midstream uh -huh. and jumping to something new. Yes. How the hell do you do that? Because I, I think about it all the time, but at the end of the day, it's like, no, no. I've got books four and five to go. I've got to get those out before I can start something else. Now, I really don't have to, right? Because I'm not George R.R. R. Martin. Nobody's waiting on books four and five, right? I can do whatever I want. But I still have a hard time doing that. So I did not publish a book last year because Desperate Dispatches took me 14 months. Um and when I talked to several different authors, they all looked at me like I was stupid and said, you're trying to write a series from start to finish with no breaks. And I'm like, of course, that's what you do. 
and they they you know said you poor stupid fool um and they said no no you need to switch it up take a break and that way you can come back to it fresh so that's what i'm trying so hopefully people don't mind too much that they're going to have to wait a while for book five which is now going to be book five and not book three and a half two and a half whatever it makes sense that's actually a really good way to look at it and as in my situation I, you know you might have some people waiting for book five but how many really well uh, the, the other nice thing is when i decide to do haley traveler like i said that's the first book i wrote i wrote it eight times i think because i had no idea how to write so there's no way i'm showing anyone the first five drafts of that um but so when i went back to it it was an already story was told it was just not well written so that's been the go back and do that and el i just want to point out this is why you end up getting banned i just see el el bald and balding el 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 threw some shade for what for you for writing three concurrent series oh the millennial gen z my god man look we're Gen X, okay? You're all no, I won't even say. <laughs> we just we just sit here watching you all yell at each other with the boomers the Wow. We just sit you're, back and watch the world burn and not really give a shit. You're self-editing tonight, bro. That's that's impressive. Yeah, well, you know everybody in the comment section with the with the exception of maybe two is is millennial or Gen Z, right? So Yes, exactly. I, I I get it too, sadly. I, I know. And but, you know, I'm just uh, get off my lawn, damn it. And you know, I told you, it wasn't until the last episode we had that I finally realized how I can ban people. So it's just dumb luck before then. Ah, oh, there we go. Right yes. Okay. Um, I, you probably know this already, David, but for those of you who don't, yesterday was uh, the, the Gen X Christmas, really. Uh, March 24th, 1984 is the day of uh, the Breakfast Club's incarceration in the school cafeteria. So yesterday was the 40th anniversary of that. Thank you very much. Nice. I'm because you all needed to know that. Oh, Nico, that's bad. You're expecting your first child. You cannot be old. Oh, no, no. you expecting you need to limber up, my young man. <laughs> Get ready. Not, not for the first year or so, but yeah, between two and five, two and seven. Once they're mobile. Be right. Yep. Yep, absolutely. It's fine the first six months because they just kind of lay there, and then they start rolling around, and it's not too bad. But once they can move, your your days are numbered, my friend. But it's all good. Um, so, twenty-four. Yeah, mine's twenty-two. Um, Mike, that's your name. That's me. Yes. Present. Other than books, do you have anything else you're doing? Uh, I am one of the weirdos who has decided that he wants to see how many eclipses he can see in his lifetime. It that is really really fucking strange. Thank I, you. I don't mind saying it. That is. Bizarre. So I saw the 2017 eclipse in Kentucky. Did it change your life? It it was really cool. Um, so much. There are so, lots of things that are really cool, though. So much so that last year I actually flew to New Mexico for an annular eclipse, and my brothers decide to. A what on. now? A, a what? So it's. I'm going to go total twelve year old on you on this. So an it's annular okay. eclipse is still the moon goes in front of the sun, but the moon is too far away from the earth, so it doesn't block the sun. You get a ring of the sun outside of the moon. And my brothers have been all over me like, no, no, that doesn't count as an eclipse because you can still see the sun because, you know, somehow they think they get a say in this because... Your, your brothers? My brothers. Yeah. Converse, I've only met one of them once, I'm but I'm sorry. really kind of surprised that that conversation came up. Well, you know, just whatever they can do to say that I'm wrong because, you know, I just laugh at them and tell them they're stupid. Um, but so they, they say I still am sitting at just one because the oldest brother, Tim, he went with me to see the eclipse. So he's like, no, no, we're still tied at one because the annular eclipse does not count. 
Well, they call it an eclipse. Well, it's an right. annular eclipse, so, you know. So now, now I'm going to uh, Indiana of all places because we all know how exciting Indiana is. So uh, I can, so no, I can we do don't, that this actually. time. Um, I mean, I don't want to throw shade at Nico, but Indiana, Iowa, I don't know if there's a lot of difference. Yeah, there's um, – <clears throat> Bards just wrote, uh, every time he throws his back out, I, for, as someone who throws his back out and carries a collapsible cane in his trunk, just in case, um, stock up on the 800 milligram Motrin, my friend. 800 milligram Motrin are the best. That's what the, the military give, gave us all the time. And at the VA hospitals, you can still get it if you ask for it. They're like big, big Motrin pills, and they're fantastic. Well, Take two or three of those with a couple of beers, and you're good to go. No, Iowa is not heaven. It's Iowa. We haven't blocked you, Eel. Yeah, Ranger Candy, you betcha. A little vitamin M. There, there you are. All right. Um, so what else we got, Michael? Uh, so after I do the eclipse, <laughs> EL's gone in 30 minutes. Okay. Um then I am going actually three Comic-Cons in a row in April. So if I make it out of April still with some semblance of sanity, I will be impressed with myself. Well, but, I hope your Comic-Cons in April go better than the show I was supposed to do Saturday did. Oh, well, yes. I, I, I got to the show that, site, that got triumphant to the site, day. And the facility was closed because a power transformer had caught fire and the facility had no power. And they actually had to replace the telephone, not just the, the transformer, but the actual telephone pole the thing was on. So um, it took about two or three hours for them to make the decision, and then they canceled it. So nice. I hope it goes better than that. On the plus side, I didn't lose any money, so yay. Well, I get to drive up to D.C. for Big Lick Comic Con Nova. Excellent. Which is, which is northern Virginia, for those of you who do not live in Virginia. Uh, and when's that? Uh, that is the second week in April. Uh, okay. Then I'm going to RavenCon in Richmond, Virginia, which at least I can drive to, but it's a 45-minute drive each day. Uh, and that's more to meet authors, so I want to try to get a dozen people that we can then interview on our channel as my goal. Uh, and, John, you are not wrong. Um and then I'm going to Four States Comic Con, which I've never gone to before. Uh, that is in Hagerstown, Maryland. So I guess the four states are Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, and West Virginia. Uh, I was really hoping the fourth state was New Jersey and not, you know, West Virginia, but it's too too far, too too much to ask for. So yeah, so I got all those. So where's the four states held? Which one of those uh, four states? Hagerstown, Maryland. It's in the panhandle of Maryland. And I will go on record as saying there's never a reason to go to Maryland, and I'm still wondering why I'm going. Yeah, you never know. You never know what you're going to find there, man. It might be like your people there. And uh, David, I hope you're not in you know Maryland. I just insulted you, but you know, let's face it. I do that like every episode. Somebody. And we don't mean to insult you, any of you. But well, I mean he's Gen X, so that's fine. It, it will happen. Then he doesn't care. Yeah. Uh, All right. So how about you? You got anything else coming up? Uh, as a matter of fact, I do. So book three of uh, the Rangers deck series is with my cover person now. It is um, so the cover should be done this week. And then I will send away KDP to get one made to see what it looks like. So maybe by the end of April or early May, it will be available. And um, as I showed you before, that's all the covers look exactly like this, but the, the card changes. And so that's the card for this one. Nice. And I am kind of toying with, and I have someone up in Vermont working on um, 
making a, uh, a set of tarot cards based on this book. And, and book this book particularly, the, uh, the the person reading the cards becomes a, comes into it quite a bit. I kind of purposely did that to kind of lay the groundwork for this set of tarot cards based on this book. So that'd be kind of cool. That is cool. Um, and, I do want to ask our Canadians who are in the channel. Yeah. Um, so Usman and Tim, next year, I believe Worldcon is in Seattle, and there's a fair number of booktubers who are talking about going. Are you going to go to Seattle next year for Worldcon? <laughs> And John, I do not like Guinness, but I have one more bottle to go. So then I will never buy it again. And Ro, you're getting commanded by EL. If you want me to ban him, just let me know. Oh, yeah, sorry. Ugh. Way too far. Oh, come on, Tim. You're in Canada. Okay. And you're acting like a European. Dude, but Canada, Canada's a really large place. Well, he's, he's in, what, Ottawa? I mean, it can't be more than a seven, eight-hour drive, something like that. To get out of Ottawa? <laughs> Look at me acting like I know something. Um, Thank you, David. Again, that's uh, Matt Slay doing the artwork of those. So. Excuse me. Thank you. I uh, appreciate that. You know, I hope it, I hope you think it doesn't suck. But so I'm left now with book three done where you are. Do I do book four or do I go to this new series that I'm kind of came into my head unbidden about three weeks ago that I'm really kind of jazzed about. And I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards doing book book. I'm kind of leaning towards doing book one of the new series, man. But I know we've talked about this before. Another part of me says, let's just do it kind of on the side and do like the whole trilogy and then put them out as done, right? Or release them like every month and a half, release one, but have them all done before doing anything with them. I, so I, I, have, to, I have to say that I have achieved something on my bucket list. I've got a Canadian to cuss at me. So, well. He didn't even spell it all out, so it's it's very I, polite. I, I, Canadian, I mean, come on, they're they're much nicer than we are. Okay, I'm going to tell I'm going to tell a Canadian joke. How do you get a group of Canadians out of a pool? No idea. Will you please get out of the pool? <laughs> that's that's all you got to do. Ugh. Oh, Tim. <sighs> Now I told you it's on my bucket list. You'll never do it. I'm going to have to get Kay to cuss at me. Did you get your first troll? No. L lame? Lame joke? Well, I didn't make it up, man. I just, <laughs> just repeating. I didn't make the joke. Right. Do you know how Canadians spell their country? C-A-N-A-D-A. -A -A. Okay. That's enough enough bashing on Canada. Uh, yeah, that, that's the best we got. Um, I don't think we're going to let John tell a joke. I, I think that would be a really bad idea all the way around. Yeah. Nope, especially not an original one. Absolutely <laughs> not. It'll be the last one you ever tell on this channel. Hey, look, look at that. Although, I, mixed opinions here. All right. We, we are, Mike, Mike and I are scraping now because once again, we didn't prepare for anything. So I said I wasn't going to do it unless somebody brought it up. But because Mike brought it up on the Twitter announcing this episode of the show, I actually did do a little research on Star Trek Voyager. And I'm happy to report that my contention that Voyager sucks in Deep Space Nine is by far the superior Trek is held up by not one, but at least six different review sites that ranked all the trucks in order. And I am going to go through them right now. Give me a minute. This is from Den of Geek. 
They have Voyager listed at number five, which is one of the highest you'll see. This is out of about 11 or 12 Trek shows, including some of the, the cartoons like Below Decks. And uh, let's see, Den of Geek ranks Deep Space Nine as number one. Um, Screen Rant ranks... I, I'm scrolling, sorry, for this taking so long. Enterprise does not do well at all. Screen Rant, Rant ranks Voyager as number nine of 11. And it got beat out by Prodigy and Lower Decks, by the way. And it ranks um, Deep Space Nine as number two. Rotten Tomatoes has Voyager as number 10 out of 11. And DSN is six. Radio Times. I thought I'd go to the Brits because, you know, they, uh, they're they pretty good about things. Deep Space Nine number one. And I can do a lot of scrolling. Voyager number seven. Nerdist has Voyager at four. And Deep Space Nine at two. And Entertainment... Um, EW.com, EntertainmentWeekly.com has Voyager at six. And DSN at number one. So I think that puts it to bed. Voyager blows. DSN does not. Thank you very much. So David actually has some useful insight here. Links to your books in the show notes. Yeah, we don't have that. I left that up to Mike. He was supposed to have done that. Jesus. Yeah. Man. See, come on. You should know. It's so me. hard to find good help these days. Uh, no, uh, no. Best captains. I didn't no. look that up. And I'm not going to. But Cisco wins. So it doesn't matter. Okay, Worldcon. Now, Worldcon's the one in Seattle, right? What is so great about Worldcon? Well, it changes countries every year, but it's coming to, oh. it, I think it's in Scotland this year. Um, but next year, it's going to be in Seattle. And How much does that cost? Well, I'm just going to go to attend. I'm not going to try to sell books. Oh, right. Okay. All right. So, you know, actually celebrate, have fun. Uh, right. Bo's not on the channel, but he'll probably be there. He's reasonably close. Because he's American. If it's a six-hour drive, he's not going to blink. No, no, because we're not pussies like that. Um, <laughs> Seattle Worldcon 2025, building yesterday's future for everyone, August 13th to 17th. Holy hell. Uh, and I believe you know, Hugo, Hugo's is decided at Worldcon, yes. The 83rd World Science Fiction Convention. Um, all right, yeah. That sounds like it'd be kind of fun. But just just for S's and G's, I'm just going to see if I can find out how much it costs to get a table at this thing. And they David, you're right. Hugo's are in China this year. So, you know, again, don't listen to me when I say things off the cuff. Um, it's where? It's in China this year. Oh, Scotland, China, you know, whatever. <laughs> Same Scotland. thing, yeah. You know, population-wise, you know, they're similar. All right. They don't uh, – Worldcon does not have anything up yet on how much it costs for tables. My bet is it's going to be a shit ton. Oh, again, I'm not going to do a table because trying to get books to Seattle, um, there's no good way to do that either. Well, dude, you can drive there. You just talked about how you could drive there. 3,000 miles. Driving a car or something? Or a Yugo? You've seen my car. Do you think my car will make the 6,000 mile round trip? I'm surprised your car makes it here. <laughs> exactly. It's only a three hour drive to Roanoke. Dude, uh, here's an idea. Uh, don't just hear me out. Buy a new car. Just yeah, but how am I supposed to lose money on this writing hobby if I buy a new car? You can lose more. Have the books printed and delivered in Seattle. You could do that, I guess. I mean, you'd have to pay someone to uh, to hold them for you for a while, but that'd probably be, you know, certainly less than... Could than, send them uh, to the hotel. We've yep. done that before. Yep, absolutely. If you're staying at the hotel, usually they'll hold that stuff for you for a week or two. Yeah. Of course, I like to stay at, like, Motel 6 or stuff like that, so I don't know if they would do that. Jesus, man. 
just once in your life. Stay, stay at a place that actually has like hot, cold running water. You're okay. You're an adult now, Mike. You can do it. Uh, you can do it. I've done it for work because they actually want you in decent hotels. And I'm like, I'm not spending extra money for that. I just need a place to sleep. Uh, yeah, I know. But see, that that's that's someone who doesn't have back issues right there saying that. Because it's, it's way beyond just a place to sleep now. I've slept in a lot of shitty places and I just don't want to anymore. Right. It's like, OK, I've done that. I have a job. I make money. I'm going to stay somewhere that. I won't wake up in the morning smelling worse than when I went to bed. See, I pretty much have no bed bugs and reasonably clean shower. Those are my requirements. Yeah, well, and that's fair, I guess. But also don't want to hear all the neighbors, you know. <laughs> or if you're in a place where you can hear gunshots, it's like, yeah, probably don't want to be there. So um, I can tell you when I was a teenager, there was a, Air Force plane that had a sonic boom over Cincinnati and blew out so many windows or whatever. I was asleep at the time and I did not wake up for a sonic boom. So I don't care if there's other people talking. Well, that was the Navy. First of all, don't blame the Air Force just because it was an airplane. If it was people doing dumb shit, it was the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that. That you're aware. I just didn't think the Navy would be you know over Cincinnati for any good reason. There's a lake up there. You can find them wherever there's water. Yeah. There's the Ohio River, but, you know. They have, like, a big uh, basic training place up in. Great Lakes. Yeah, yeah that's in Chicago. Like in Michigan or something like something that, in a stupid place, you would never expect them to have it. Yeah, because my brother went into the Navy not once but twice, and both times he enlisted in winter. So he got to go up to northern Illinois, southern Michigan, something like that in winter for basic training. Yeah, see, that's just stupid. Again, this is what I tell them every chance I get. Editing is for real work, EL. Uh, John said uh, editing a novel is not like editing a short story. No, no, it is not. And EL says editing is for real work. And yes, it is. And it's like eye droopy kind of. That, and that's always bad, too, if you, if you get in that place where it's like, okay, now I've absolutely got to stop because then you'll like add mistakes to the book and you don't want to do that. Lackland in July is also not a not a fun thing. It, it, did you do that, David? I'm going to wait for David to answer that question now. Mm. And I'm amazed when I do my own editing and I just I read a paragraph and I'm like, I got all these sentences in the wrong order. I literally have to change the third to the first and the first, you know. I don't know how I can do that, write the entire paragraph and be like, it's all out of order. This this one simple paragraph. But so or you hit a button and you repeat a paragraph. You didn't yeah. <laughs> didn't plan on doing that. Uh, 98. Nice. I remember 98. Good year. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Oh, nice. I won't ask you what language, so you don't have to tell us anything else, but I, I can take a couple of guesses. <laughs> <sighs> so, any questions from the audience? We did this on purpose, by the way. It's not that we didn't have anybody lined up. We, we scheduled this on purpose, just, I think, so we didn't have to talk to anybody else because it was our, our Gen X and showing through. It's like, oh, I don't want to talk to other people. So. It, it does make scheduling easier if we do it at the end of every quarter. We have the the bald truth. Um, what is EL saying here? Uh, uh, next book filling. Uh, um, mine, I actually haven't. If I, if I go this new story, which I'm using uh, as a working title, um, it's like a code name almost just because I haven't thought of a title yet. I'm just using the word sigil, um, which I think is a great name or a great word. Um, I don't have a bad guy yet. I mean, I have an idea of what the bad guy is going to do, right? And what the whole premise of it is, but I don't have an actual bad guy yet. So, um, David, I mean, spelling errors and stuff, you can't read an 800 word story in the New York Times 
these days without finding a spelling error. Uh, I, I'm kind of over that now. I just let it go. And I have a question for everyone. Oh, Vikram. Vikram. That was, I talked to my friend who, his parents, they each had 10 kids. They both got divorced. They remarried and they had him. So he has 20 half siblings. God, what would the... What would the uh, freaking Brady Bunch house look like with that? Can you imagine? Well, I mean, like his oldest Money? sibling. That's a football team. His oldest sibling is like 35 years older than him. So, you know, he's retired now. Um, <sighs> but um, so I was asking him, and one side is Muslim and the other side is Hindu. <clears throat> Thanksgiving must be fun. <laughs> so. 20. I can't. I mean, Jesus, that's just nuts. So, okay, Vikram, that is what my friend... He's saying, like, just use Vikram Duvall. Just use the, both names together. Yeah, that is. That's that's kind of almost like a, a twisty mustache kind of villain. You know, with a top hat, Vikram Duvall? Uh, I might have to do that then. It's um, got a lot of Disney vibe. So I had offered Usman to be the bad guy, but... Sadly, oh, that's not going to happen. Vikram Duvall works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Vic Devil, but fancy. Nice. Oh. So when is your next Comic-Con, Row? Do you have one coming up anytime soon? Uh, Crash City in August. At the end of August. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I, this year, I mean, last year was just so very bad um, that I just kind of went, you know what, I'm just going to take a year. Because and I think you saw it, a, a lot of cons last after COVID, right, the year after COVID, cons were great. People yeah. were spending money. They were, you know, happy to be there. They were still a little nervous of other people, but they were there. They were coming out and they were throwing down cash. Last year. The people were still there, although not quite as many, right? The crowds were smaller, I think, in almost every place we went. But they were a lot tighter, right? And I think with interest rates on credit cards up in the 20 to high 20%, um, I think that's probably – I kind of thought this year will probably be the same. So I said, you know what, I'll just kind of take a year away from – for the most part, I won't do as many shows. I'm not even doing the one here in, in town this year. And, and that's given me, you know, I've done really well on that every year. So I'll just. Uh, Canadian bad. Um, I was going to tell you something very insightful and it just went right out of my head. You were. I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah, well, it's gone now. So was it was it about going to shows or. Oh, I know. I was going to tell you. So far this year, I have sold, I'm just about 50-50 in selling hardbacks versus paperbacks. Well, that's because you wrapped them up with your maps all pretty, which was a fantastic yeah. idea, by the way. You got one that you can show people? Oh, uh, no. So, so I, Mike, actually, go find one. Mike I'll actually get... had this great idea. He has these maps, and he decided to take one of the maps, and it turns out it was the perfect size. He wrapped a book in it, like old school the way we used to uh, wrap books up when we were going to school, when we were kids to, to, you know, protect the things you would take a paper bag and you'd wrap it up, ask your parents. Anyway, Mike did that with his maps and he got a little wax seal and he produced. So I actually, each book has a different color wax and goes with the cover of the book itself. So this one here, this one, is to speak with elders because it has kind of a grayish brown and this one is my latest desperate dispatches because it's red and it has a dragon on the seal which you might be able to see there we go yeah so, so and once i did this i am now selling 50 50 and i make more money on the hardback so yeah that's a great idea and i'm totally ripping it off if i can find a way to uh put those things on there without ripping them apart so um, Somebody's by EL. What, what the hell is Long Pig? Hmm. 
Sunshine. I don't think you should. No, I won't say that. I'll oh, sell that thing again. It'll <laughs> stop. There was a mama joke in there. And John, no, Ingram did not do that. I um, I have the extra benefit of at work. Our, I was told that our, con Ew. our copier That's contract, they will send more toner when we run out, so we don't have to pay for it. So the only thing they pay for is paper. So they told me, the woman told me, I don't care if you print out hundreds of maps. It doesn't matter to me because we don't pay any extra except for paper. And she wasn't interested in worrying about that. So I literally okay. print all Those these out. Trees, right? So well, what's the difference? Paper and all that. And Nico, I was so impressed when I saw you when you're opening these. I was, I was like, man. Well, you should be opening them carefully. It's a map. You want to keep the map. You don't want to ruin it. Where'd you get your stamp? Uh, Amazon, as always. Okay. So do you have you have different stamps? I know you have different color wax, but do you have different stamps? Yep. Uh, so an owl for becoming a druid. Um, the Vectus symbol, which protects you from the mind controlling for sins and yep. sorrows. Then a centaur for to speak with elders and a dragon for desperate dispatches. And David wants to know, Mike, are you selling those on your website? Um, sure. Um, I've had some interesting times with my website. I had 40 people all get on there and buy the same one D&D &D module that I'm not really trying to sell anymore. <laughs> and found out that it was just people who had stolen credit card numbers and they were using my site to see if they could purchase something or not so uh, email me or david if you're you're in georgia okay sorry yeah i'm going north for all my shows uh but email me i will happily send them to you <laughs> too bad your website isn't linked on this page hold on hold on it's in my link tree um, .com. what's that Authormikemoman.com for me or rosearebushy.com for Ro. And okay, what's yours again, Mike? Authormikemoman.com. You know, to not get me confused with all the other Mike Momans that are out there. I think there's two. I know I'm the only Rosair Bushy out there, so that's. That's easy enough. Good luck spelling it, though. <laughs> so now you know when you if you go to Comic Cons, just do a little extra. Um, I actually I've got good at wrapping presents now because I have to wrap all these myself. Can now you're good at giving them. That's the question. What's that? Are you good at giving presents now? Is the question. No. <laughs> well, why you would I wrap that? the shit out of them? That's great. Awesome. Uh, so my two nephews, when I went home last month, I, their birthdays are both in February. So I, I told them I gave was giving them both a present, and they both got a copy of my book. Cheap bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're both thanked in the back, and I told them if I'm going to acknowledge them, they have to read the book. All right. So how old are they? Uh, well, now they're 27 and 24. So they didn't beat you up or. One's a doctor, one's a lawyer. Come on. No, they, they can afford work. a book. Jesus, man. <laughs> you can buy the book. <laughs> you, them, you at least gave them book one, right? Uh, no, I, each time a book comes out, that's what their present is that I give them for the next time I need to give them a present. So they got desperate dispatches, and I signed it too. Oh, well. I know. Ooh, that's important. <sighs> Having said that, I do have one signed book that I'm actually pretty happy about. If if you, I don't know if anybody here has seen uh, the Apple TV show uh, Masters of the Air, and there is a another show that goes along with it. It's a, a one hour documentary about the. It's called the Bloody Hundred. So um, the plane behind me here, the Jesus, I can't do this. The refueler. Not, not the F-15, but the refueler. Uh, it was a 100th air refueling wing, which is a 
historical lineage descendant of the 100th bomb group in the show. And uh, one of the guys in the documentary wrote a book called um, Luck of the Draw. And uh, and I got to meet him and another guy who who was characterized in the show, Rosie Rosenthal. And just fantastic guys, super interesting. And if you haven't watched Masters of the Air yet, uh, if you like that kind of thing, absolutely watch that. It's it's terrific. I don't I don't think it's as good as Band yeah, of Brothers, Brothers. Yeah. right? But it's just because it's a very different kind of thing, you yeah. know. Uh, but it's still very very good. So the guy who does my for apples, the guy who does my audio books, he's actually in that movie in that series. Oh really? Uh, Peter Lorch. He's only in the first three episodes, so I'm assuming he gets shot down in episode three. Well, they did. Yeah, the episode three, I think, is where they, the the hundred sent up thirteen aircraft on one raid, and only one dude came back. Only one plane came back. Hmm. Well, so, yeah, that was pro he was probably on that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, I, I always tell people that now that you know Steve and Tom are done with him, he works for me now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> You're his pro bono work, man. <laughs> you're, you're his community service. It's like, okay, I'll help that guy do his fucking book. He clearly doesn't know me. Um, <laughs> Mike, I, think, I don't work for you anymore, man. I thought you were somebody, but no. <laughs> I think he was just happy because he's from Bristol, and I'm like, no, I, I want that accent. I don't want London. I don't want American. He's like, I, I can just use my normal speaking voice. I can just talk. Yay. And he's asked me questions about characters. He's like, oh, well, this guy, I gave him a Southern Welsh dialect. And I'm like, okay, sure you did. Go crazy. Knock yourself out. I'm like, I can't tell the difference, but okay, great. Um, so what have we learned today, Mike? We learned that uh, you have to update our information on the uh, page notes. Uh, we've learned that David should very much definitely contact me if he wants to be on our show next week because I'll probably forget. Yeah, we we got it. We're we're taking taking some places here. Uh, Wednesday, uh, Mike will probably be by himself because I will be driving back from D.C. again. But he's going to be talking to veteran Sira Medeiros, and I I want to say she's Air Force, but I don't know. So the nice thing, the book that's coming out that she would has a story in the anthology is they are all women veterans and they're all writing horror stories. So uh, they said that's a first that they had all women veteran authors for an anthology. So here's my question for, her. is it fiction or not? Because they probably have horror stories that are not fiction. Yeah, well, they probably don't want to share those, probably, probably at least. Yeah. All right. And Thursday, and I will be here for Thursday, is Tobias Youngblood which is really just a great name. But, so yeah. he, uh, he writes horror too, right? No, he writes um, urban fantasy. Same thing. Okay. I have no idea. So, yeah, he, he had the misfortune of being at the table next to me at MarsCon, so. All right. And now he's paying his penance. Exactly. Right. So... Um, yes, other than that, uh, we talked about a thousand dollars ish is probably about as low as you're going to get for publishing a book, unless you're a traditionally published author like big time David James Jones. Sorry. Me back to the beginning of the show, yeah. like a professional, yeah, Always I got his name wrong. Though, so, David Jones, not James, I can read. Um, and EL, I did not ban you, I don't care what you say. I think it's Roe who's doing it all the time, and I'm just taking the heat for it. Roe barely knows how to turn on his microphone. So, all right. Well, hey, thanks everybody for hanging out with us. And uh, there's another hour of your life you will never get back, but go write something. The monkey. Oh, that little, is that that what that little thing is in back on your shelf there? Davy Jones, you know, from the monkeys, the group. From the yeah, 60s? I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, Davy Jones. David Jones, That was he's a member. Oh, gotcha. gotcha, gotcha. Did you not watch the Monkeys show? Yeah, of course.
course. Last train to Clarksville, baby. <laughs> and Tim, you're you're still a favorite Canadian. All right. Yep. Take care, everybody. Right, We're going to awkwardly wait.